Augustine looks for Brooks and now it's a big opportunity for the youngsters. He turns his man. Still David Brooks could score from here. Has to score David Brooks with a lethal finish. This should be another goal for us. Augustine here. Still Augustine should be able to score. Can he still score? Come on, get the ball in. Augustine gets his goal. A lot of luck involved as the keeper somehow didn't collect the ball there. So here we are, back again with another episode of the Leeds United Career Mode Series Season 3 is in full flow. Today's episode has got the potential of being the biggest and most important episode of the series so far as we try and bring Erling Haaland to Leeds United. He said it before, he wants to win the Premier League with Leeds. Let's try and make that happen. So far this season in terms of transfers has gone well. Of course, Thiago has joined. We've got Rodrigo up top as well. Apart from that, Berkey came in. And last episode, we did make a couple of nice signings with, of course, Gravenberch and Luis Felipe. So this side is coming together. This could prove to be... An important episode. If we sign Haaland, our team is going to be unbelievable. We've got Premier League games, transfer action, the signing of Haaland. A lot's going to go down in today's episode of the Leeds Career Mode. So if you guys are enjoying the series, keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this started. So it is press conference time. Are you confident that you will win trophies this season? I think so. I think we've got the team that can challenge for titles this season with Thiago coming in, with a proper good keeper in Berkey coming in and now potentially Haaland and maybe more signings. I think we've got the squad depth to compete in tournaments and I'm definitely gunning for the Premier League as well as some of the domestic cup competitions. This season, I want to win trophies. Next up, will you sign Robin Koch as he's going to Leeds in real life? Now, I have seen a lot of rumours about this transfer happening in real life. So maybe we should get it done with in this series as well. But if we do make it happen, I am probably going to get rid of Liam Cooper which is something I don't really want to do. But if we want to progress as a club, we've got to get rid of the players that aren't really good enough at this point and bring in better players. And Koch is certainly better than Liam Cooper. So it depends on that. We'll now scout him, see how much he's worth and then make the big decision. But he's definitely on my radar now. Let me know in the comments section, would you rather keep Liam Cooper or go for Robin Koch? They're, anyway, both of these two players, if they... Whoever stays at the club, basically, is going to be our fourth choice centre-back regardless. So, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Next up, remember in episode 1, you wanted to prefer Bamford over Augustine because he was just a loney. Oh my god. This, this takes me back. Imagine, imagine if we would have preferred Bamford and sold Augustine or never signed him back. Who, or, or not trusted him. It would have been brutal because this man single-handedly in that first season gave us a top-half finish. And after that, he's just going from strength to strength. So it was a big decision in this series, not using Bamford, a player we owned, and to use Augustine Aloni, but it paid off, man. He's now at the club, we own him, and he's just absolutely phenomenal. He's had a brilliant start of the season with three goals already in the Prem. Let's hope he can keep it up. He is now one of my favorite career mode players I've literally ever used. That's how much I love using him. So there you go, press conference done. Let's move on. Talking about Augustine, he picks up another player of the episode award. What an episode he had last time around. Two Premier League games and he came up with three goals. So, so good in that last one and worthy of being player of the episode. We're still left with 100 million even after signing Luis Felipe and Gravenberch. And that's because we sold the likes of Cavani and a few other players. So, we're looking really good now. 99 million to bring Erling Haaland to Leeds United. Is it enough? That's the real question. It should be because he's got a release clause, but... I want to negotiate with Dortmund to get that fee down. We've spoken about making this transfer happen from pretty much the start of the series. The storyline about his father playing for Leeds, about Haaland publicly saying he wants to win, of course, the Premier League with Leeds United. So we got to make it happen. We absolutely got to make it happen. I'm going to go with a 60 million offer similar to his valuation. But I'm sure Dortmund are going to counter that because there's no way they're letting Haaland go for 60. And they are. I'm surprised. Erling Haaland for 60 million seems like an absolute bargain and I think it's because of the fact that he's still only 84 rated. I guess we're buying him at literally the perfect time so that's that 60 million for Haaland seems like an unbelievable deal. We still got to get the negotiations sorted it's not going to be easy negotiating with a player like Haaland. Crucial squad role I mean that is obvious him and Augustine are going to be the front two forwards for us. That is for sure. Five-year deal. That is just perfect. We want him for as long as possible in this series. Let's keep going. He wants a 130 million release clause. 
you know what for once i'm gonna give him that release loss because I'm, I'm i'm sure nobody's gonna pay that and apart from the fact it actually helps you reduce the wages and also we'll actually be saving a bit of money so we'll see how that works and of course if a club comes in for him we might just up his contract again and you know solve the problem that way so i'm gonna give him a hundred thousand and we'll give him about 700 as a signing bonus is that less i'm not too sure it should be a good offer it is a fair offer maybe i've paid a bit more but with that erling haaland is now a leeds united player by far the most expensive signing we've made and quite possibly the best as well. Him and Augustine up top are just going to be illegal. And would you look at this guys, Leeds United have a new number 9, Haaland is a Leeds player. What a freaking good signing this is. I mean look at some of his stats, 95 sprint speed, that shot power, strength, finishing composure. He's valued at 65 and we got him for 60, just seems like... The best deal we could get. Unbelievable signing. Come on, guys. Haaland to Leeds is done. Okay, it's now time to reveal our season objectives for the season. Now, basically, these are six objectives, all decided by you guys in the comment section. For every objective we complete, we get an additional 5 million added on to our transfer budget. Now, of course, I'm not sure if there's going to be a season four or not with Leeds, but if there is, these objectives could prove to be vital yet again. Last season, we got an additional of 10 million because of objectives, so we know how crucial they are. Starting off with the Viking. Score 30 goals with Haaland this season. Shouldn't be a problem if we know how to use him well in game, which I think I do. I've used him before in the Leicester career mode. Among the best, B2 former Champions League winning teams in the competition. Remember, we do have Champions League football this season, which I'm so excited for. The assist king, assist 25 goals this season with Brooks. Now, last season, he broke the Premier League assist record. Can he take it one step further? We'll see. Moving on, world-class quality. Have 685 plus rated players in the squad. We've already got three, so we're making good progress on that. Silverware, win a trophy this season. We need to win some silverware. All this effort and all this hard work needs to have something to show for. So a trophy, that's what we're gunning for. Midfield maestros, score assist. 40 goals this season with Thiago and James, the two former Bayern midfielders, the two maestros. 40 goal contribution shouldn't be much of a problem for those two. The board have really backed us this season because even after the Haaland signing, we've got 40 million to work with. I mean, they really want us to succeed this season, at least in terms of how much money they've given us to spend. And this is how our team looks. Honestly, it's brilliant. I am thinking of improving at the fullback position, maybe bringing in like a fullback who can play on both sides to give us squad depth. Let me know in the comments section if you guys have any suggestions. We'll keep that transfer for potentially next episode. For now though, it's time for the Premier League as Watford take on Leeds. We're playing them at the Ellen Road, so I want to go for the win because these are the kind of games you have to win. Haaland's debut as well. Let's get it. We just made our biggest signing of the series so far and of course he's making his debut in this one. Haaland up top with Augustine. How are they going to play together? I am so eager to find out. Brook starts in Cam. Calvin, Phillips, Thiago, all of them in the lineup. Let's go out there and get the result against Watford. One thing that always gets to me is just how massive Haaland is in game. Like he's 6'4", but he looks a lot bigger than that. Kind of gives me a Zlatan vibes. You know, he's got a similar personality on the pitch as well. And yeah, let, let's see how that tall figure helps us in game. You know, maybe holding off opponents or winning headers and all. Should be fun. But don't forget, he is super quick as well. Like 95 sprint speed. He ain't no slouch. So... We got to use the pace as well already. First chance for us. Maybe Thiago's first goal for the club. The so well there deserved a goal. That was magical right there from Thiago. So much quality in this team, man. We've got ballers everywhere. Finds Brooks. I see Haaland. Could we be seeing his first goal in a lead shirt? But he gets pushed off the ball. He does earn a free kick for us. And you know who is going to be taking free kicks for us. It is none other than James Rodriguez. The question is, can he curl this one in? It's decent from James. But this time, the keeper read that one pretty well oh come on are we really gonna give away a chance like this nah just nah it's sad on the ball now looks for the derby back to size he offside i think he is he isn't still has the ball looks for the cross in jamal lewis as well oh what is this nonsense what is this nonsense dela fell with the chance in a big save right there from berkey for some reason i couldn't get the ball off that guy i, I don't know why but that was what first first chance of the game and they almost scored off it berkey Proving why we signed him there. Brilliant save. Now, Brooks has picked up a bit of a knock and I really don't want to risk getting him injured. So, we're going to sub him off. And I think I'm going to bring on Billy Gilmore. But I'll have Thiago playing in cam. I could play James in that position. You know what? Let's go Let's go with James in cam and see how that works. Let's see on the pitch if it can work. But I'm hoping Brooks is just, a, 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 you know, a small injury. Because if it's something serious, 
We could have problems. We know how important he is to this team. Sees Augustine and now I see James making a good run. The question is, does he have the pace? Nah, he doesn't. That's the only thing letting James down, man. He would be unbelievable on this game if he had that burst of pace, but... You can't have it all, I guess. Here's Augustine, though. Getting pushed off like he wasn't even there. Like, what? This has been a difficult game. Every team, you know, every mid-table team in this series, like, they, they fight like it's the Champions League final, man. And I don't know why. It's so annoying to deal with. We're taking a set-piece routine. No point shooting from there. Here's Billy Gilmore. has turned one. Still Billy Gilmore. Still Billy Gilmore. Could cross this one in, but Augustine wasn't making the run. Why did he stop? Oh, that is great footwork from him. And I see Haaland making a good run. This might be the chance. Here's Haaland, brings it inside, big shot, no way! Haaland in this game has wasted two easy chances. He has to be doing better, he has to, we've paid big money for him, man. And now it's Thiago on the ball, what can he do from here? Looks for Billy Gilmore, gets completely pushed off the ball like he wasn't even there. Since when are Watford so good? They're defending like, like prime AC Milan with Maldini and all, like... It makes no sense whatsoever. You know what's the worst thing about this draw? The fact that we had big chances and they fell to our superstar signing Haaland and he missed them. Like, it's frustrating. I know it's only Haaland's first game for Leeds, but come on, man. He had to be taking those chances. A tough game, a really tough one. Watford were fighting for their lives. I don't know why, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Another game where we've dropped points and stupid fashion if we want to win the league we can't be doing this how will brooks's injury impact your squad selection it all depends on how long the injury is because if it's serious i don't even know what i'm gonna do because he's gonna be a big miss for us we saw hammers in that camp position he's just not good enough there oh my god it's a couple of months david brooks with a broken toe injury will be out for the next two months wow he's gonna miss a few of our champions league group stage games this, this is, this is not what I wanted. This is the last thing I wanted, in fact. We might have to figure out a different way to play without Brooks, because he was so good in that camp position. I don't even know what I'm going to do here. I really don't. It's, it's going to be difficult adapting to his absence. Not going to lie, we really couldn't have had a worse start to our season, especially considering how much we've invested. It's abysmal that we are 8th in the league. We've already got teams like Man United at top of the league with 10 points. Chelsea being perfect. Liverpool, Spurs. we got to keep up and we need a win in our next game against Southampton. Otherwise, we'll be trailing back quite a bit. You lot have wanted to see Roberts get a prominent role in this series. Well, there you go. He's now playing in cam in this one. This is his chance to impress and shine. Let's hope he delivers. Haaland, Augustine, I'm still trusting them. Up top, of course, Gustin is a starter, but Haaland does have a bit of stiff competition with Rodrigo at this point. I'm giving James a bit of a rest. His form has dipped massively, so Billy Gilmore comes in. That's our team. We have to win this game no matter what. Remember last season, I had a stupid glitch with the realism mod that would just crash my game every time I went into it? Yep, yeah, that's happening again with me against Southampton. I think the last time it happened, it was also against Southampton. Maybe it's a glitch with the mod or something, I don't know. But anyways, we're going to simulate this game regardless because we don't have any other choice here and hope for the win with Haaland, Augustine, Thiago and all. I'm expecting a big win. Well, it's not a big win, but at least we beat them 2-1. But an injury to Thiago could really cause us problems. The season hasn't started and already a couple of players out injured. This is... Just not we wanted. Thankfully, it's only a couple of weeks long for Thiago. Not gonna lie, the plan was to play the Southampton game and end it off. And then, of course, next episode, we have the transfer deadline day. But now we're gonna have to, of course, uh, make any remaining signings we want right now. Because I do want to play one more game in this episode. So, I'm thinking we get it done. We've got about 40 million in the bank. I'm looking for a fullback. And right now, I can only think of one player... Let's take a look. And that man is Nuno Tavares. He can play on the left side. He can play on the right side. Four-star weak foot. Just seems like the perfect signing for that fullback role. And he can definitely compete with, of course, Alioski or even Jamal Lewis. So this seems like a proper good signing. And add to the fact that he's got a release clause of just 19 million, we could sign him for cheap. So I guess the signing of Robin Koch will keep that for maybe January or once it goes through in real life. For now, Nuno Tavares has to be the man I want to go for. So let's get into it. Now he's got a release clause of 19 million. So I'm going to go in with 12 just to see if Benfica are willing to play with that kind of money. But I'm sure they'll ask for more. They do. 17.9 isn't all that bad with a sell-on clause as well. Let's counter with 15. Of course, saving a penny would really help us here. So 15 plus a 10% sell-on clause. 
15.7 I can work with that okay that's a lot lower than his release clause and well that is what we're paying for Nuno Tavares. This is what I'm offering Nuno Tavares 35,000 for wages 250k and of course the signing bonus rotation squad role he should accept this and there you go that's done we've now signed a quality left back who can also function as a right back so we've added a lot of squad depth which is obviously necessary. Remember last season, Jamal Lewis picked up a big injury. In this case, now we've got, of course, Tavares to come in. Ooh, now we've got decisions to make. Nuno Tavares is already the same overall as Jamal Lewis. And you know what? 95 sprint speed, we gotta put him in. So Jamal Lewis is gonna be on the bench from now. Let me know in the comment section who you would prefer, but that pace, I cannot say no to it. And I think with that, I'm pretty much done with our transfers. I mean, it's been a fantastic window where we've signed so many good players. I think we've got what it takes to win championships and titles this season. We just need to up our game when we're facing the mid-table teams because those are the teams that cause me damage. So deadline day pretty much done. No more business to be conducted. I'm so happy with the team we've built and let's just hope for the best from now. Season 3 has been absolutely perfect for us off the pitch but on the pitch things have been different. We're 6th in the Premier League right now and we got to start picking up the pace. Our next game is against Chelsea and we need to win here. We've already dropped way too many points so this is going to be a big one. We've had a few players not fully fit for this game for some reason including James and of course Juan Foyt so this is where the squad depth comes into play. Luis Felipe starts this game against Chelsea. Of course, we've got Haaland up top, Robert starts in camp, Billy Gilmore as well against this former team. Nuno Tavares making his debut. It's time for Leeds Chelsea. Let's get into it. Okay, thank goodness the game is working now. I guess Southampton is a glitch team with the realism mod. I don't even know. But anyways, that's the Chelsea team we're facing. And honestly, I think we've got a better team than that. So... Are we the favourites? I don't know, but we're going to put in a good performance, hopefully. I didn't realise this, but we're missing three very important pieces of our midfield in this game. Brooks, James and Thiago, all of them not playing in this one. They're going to be a big miss. At the same time, big opportunities for those playing instead of them, like Shackleton and Gilmore. Let's see how they cope with the pressure. Morata has broken through here. Still Alvaro Morata. Since when is he this quick? Ben White puts in a strong challenge to save us there. But man, Morata... He, is, he looks to be on form here, which is going to be trouble to defend against because we know when he's at it, he can be very dangerous. Chelsea just toying with us in this game with the possession they're keeping. It's so hard to get the ball off them. Look at their quality of passing. It's impossible to defend against. What am I supposed to do against that? Chelsea have been unbelievable. Our formation, our tactics just aren't working against them. They've been that much better than us in this first half. Even with Haaland and all, I just can't seem to cope. We gotta switch things up in the second half by the looks of it. This could lead to something now and we need it to lead to something because we are just unbelievably... Oh, Shackleton looks for Augustine. What's he doing there? He literally slid in. Take the shot, man. What is happening in this episode? I really don't know. Ah, oh, that is just oh, painful. That is so painful to see that happen. That should have been a goal. What we're doing so far in this game, simply unacceptable. And that's why I'm gonna have to go for a more attacking approach. Halan plays up top, 4-2-3-1, Augustine on the left, James at Cam and Rodrigo comes on. We're bringing off Shackleton and Gilmore who have been just abused and dominated in this game. So let's get into the second half, a new approach and let's see what we can do. We can't defend against this, we really can't. We're getting abused here, man. Come on, Berkey with one of the biggest and most important saves I've seen right now. Who that was close, but Berkey did it and we might still have a fighting chance, but it's not looking good for us, man. Our players are just... Look at that passing from James. That's, that's what's happening all game long. Everybody's underperforming right now. We should be playing and dominating Chelsea with the team we've got. Instead, we're getting slapped around silly here. They're keeping all the ball. We're barely able to even get out of our own half. It's, it's a struggle right now. And if this is what's to come this season, we can kiss trophies goodbye. We almost conceded right there. Des did well to deal with the threat. But it's, it's, it's non-stop, man. Chance after chance for Chelsea. And we're just sitting and watching. That's how bad it is. Haaland has to hold that up well he does. That's his first big moment for us. But now he needs support. I need Rodrigo to run a little faster. But for some reason he can't. Back to Haaland now. Who's struggling to control the ball. I don't know where his space has gone. But he gets taken down inside the box. Earns the team a penalty. Big moment in the game. A chance to get a potential equaliser. Completely undeserved by the way. So I don't know if we can even score this. But we'll see. I'm going to take this one with Haaland. I think it'll do wonders for his confidence if he does end up scoring this. So let's go left. Please, Haaland, you've got to put this one in. I think I've messed up the penalty. I cannot believe it, man. I cannot believe it. How does the keeper always dive the right way? Oh, it's, it, this game's a joke. This game is an absolute joke. James. Rodrigo. 
Oh, come on. I can't do anything today. Haaland, using his strength, almost gets taken down right there by Umtiti. Phillips now looks for Haaland. This is the chance we've been waiting for. Haaland fake shot inside. Still, Haaland can't get the shot off his feet. He's had a disastrous start to his Leeds career. Can't get a foot right. Full time against Chelsea. By far one of the worst performances ever put in. I mean, I've lost before by bigger goals. But this game, I couldn't create anything. I got my tactics all wrong. The 4-2-3-1 didn't work. And also, Chelsea were just much better than us. We didn't take our chances. We even missed the penalty. It was embarrassing. This is going to be a tough season if we continue like this. We've got to fix things up. It really has been a tough start of the season, man. Didn't expect to be 8th in the Premier League after 5 games. we got to pick up the pace. We're already 7 points off the top. Uh, it's, it's frustrating, man. Like, we've been playing so bad. Like, honestly, it's, it's embarrassing, especially after the money we've spent. Next episode, we got to fix things up. I'm hoping Halan finds his feet because he's been abysmal so far in the two games that he's played. Things need to change. Things really do need to change and hopefully we can pick up the pace. Obviously, you guys can see the background. It's Champions League themed. Next episode, I'm going to reveal the group stages and we're going to play our first group stage game. Hopefully, we can find our feet and form back because I don't want to embarrass myself in the Champions League. So, there's that. We've missed Brooks so much, man. I hope he returns soon. No player of the episode award for this one because, come on, we were so bad in this episode. How, who are we going to give the player of the episode award? But with that, we're going to wrap up today's episode. Champions League next episode. we got to start winning games. A lot's going to happen in the next one. So if you're enjoying the series so far, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.